Great to have you back here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation now is, of course, uh, health-related, and that is with regards to the increase in COVID-19 cases here in Nigeria. The NCDC reports about 747 new cases with Lagos. Scary, but has uh, the highest numbers, 488 as the uh, last figures that were released. And, you know, that brings us into a conversation about what must be done, because it doesn't seem like uh, we are in a better place. Um, I understand that a lot of the uh, uh, COVID-19 rules and regulations may have been relaxed, you know, along, uh, amongst uh, Lagosians, um, Nigerians in general, in the last uh, couple of months since we started to see figures like 11 or 21 new cases and zero deaths uh, for a couple of months. But it seems we're back in the place where, we, you know, we were in, you know, April, May, you know, 2020. Um, there is, of course, um, the you know conversation that I I, I think somebody sp spoke about um, sometime last week about you know how a lot of people don't seem to be very interested in the COVID nineteen conversation anymore. Uh, the rules with regards uh, you know wearing a face mask all the time, uh, getting your hands sanitized, some of all those things have been thrown in the gutter. You know, and not very many people are taking them um, as seriously as they should be taken. But the scary part is. Um, our vaccination figures are very, very low. And second, the Delta variant doesn't seem to care about what you think or, you know, what you look like. It seems to be even more um, infectious, as, ha as has been described, than the other variants of uh, COVID-19. Um, so it, it, I believe it's something that should be, you know, should cause enough worry amongst Lagosians. I know that people are worried about, you know, another lockdown and how that would affect businesses and what, you know, that would mean uh, for people here in Lagos. But I think it's important that we start now before we get to, you know, a place where we're hearing about 2,000 cases a day or 4,000 cases a day. We've never seen it that high before, but I don't think we should wait till we get there before we start to take what necessary precautions um, uh, are available. What, do you agree with that? Indeed. Lagos has the highest um, number of cases in Nigeria, but the cases in other states are rising as well. Yeah. Take a look at Kano, for instance. The reports say, that's according to the Guardian newspaper, that 20 core members have come down with the COVID-19 um, in um, disease and that they've been sent to an isolation center where 1,900 core members also are. But according to the report, when Guardian newspaper reached out to the NYC coordinator in Kano State, she denied that there were any COVID-19 cases in Kano. So is this the government trying to cover up the situation or where exactly is, you know, the missing link? Also in Uyo State, um, the Guardian newspaper covered the story as well this morning. It says that um, NYC um, flew out bodies that of core members who, were, who died from COVID-19 um, to their states for burial, to Uyo for burial. And it's just, it's just so sad, you know, what really is happening here with the COVID-19 pandemic, how it's just affecting everybody. Globally now, 197 million cases, over 4 million, 4 million deaths, 4.2 million deaths worldwide. Well, the question really that I asked, is the COVID-19 pandemic ever going to end? Is this something that we would see end anytime soon? First sure outbreak, I December I, I 31st, think... 2019. We saw the impact here February 24th, 2020, when Nigeria recorded her first case. And it doesn't seem to be slowing down. If anything, there's a report by the WHO that COVID-19 cases have, have continued to rise globally for about a month. You know, and that, um, of course, the U.S. is the highest ranked country regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. So it did slow down for us for, you know, at some point, you know, until the new variant. And that's the thing with viruses. Um, they, you know, have the they ability mutate. to mutate, you know, and become even more deadly. You know, they understand what challenges they had. They're so silly. Understand the challenges they had, you know, being, you know, variant A, and then understand what they need to do to, you know, mutate and to grow into a different variant. And that's one of the challenges. Will it be here forever? I don't think so. You know, I'm sure that centuries ago there were, you know, other viruses, you know, that the world, you know, was able to deal with. Um, but how long would this take before we are eventually able to deal with it? Nobody can also tell. And that's the importance of vaccination. And, you know, that, so, so with reports, there's not been that many cases of people who have been vaccinated that still eventually, I don't think there's, you know, you know up to a handful, that still eventually uh, passed on from COVID-19 complications after being uh, fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. um, how much more do we need to do with regards to vaccinating everybody? Nigeria still has a very long way to go. 
Uh, we heard about Moderna vaccines, we about four million of them which were sent to Nigeria mm -hmm. uh, last week. So that's that's a plus, you know. But we're talking two hundred million people here, and if we need to reach herd immunity, that means we need to get at least you know one hundred and fifty million people vaccinated. We've barely done ten; we've not even done five million vaccinations, and so we have a very very long way to go, you know, here in Nigeria. The fears, I understand them, business wise. The fears also, I understand them with regards to lack of proper health infrastructure, lack of uh, proper isolation centers across the country to actually take care of these numbers, but. Do we need to get to a place, and that's the, the, the you know, role of governance, um, being able to take decisions early enough. Do we need to get to a place where Lagos starts to record 1,000 cases or 2,000 cases daily before we understand the need for everyone to start to take these precautions again? And if you look around businesses in Lagos and public places in Lagos, you would see those signs on the, on the entrance, no face masks, no entry. But that's really just to pass the door. Once you pass the door, you can take off that face mask and, and stay there. And I, I, I get very, very upset when I walk into public spaces, restaurants uh, and the likes, and I see people walking with a face mask, but the face mask is on their jaw, <laughs> you know, and, and they basically, it, you might as well just put it in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And I feel very, very upset because the people who run this establishment should be able to tell every single person whether you are ordering something or you're sitting down there, as long as you're in that place, you should wear a face mask. But they ignore these things because Nigerians have that attitude that as long as it's not affecting me directly, then, you know, I, I really won't be bothered. And the, the one part is, you know, Nigerians, I believe, still have, I'm sure there's still millions of Nigerians who feel COVID-19 is fake and it's not real, you know, it's a scam. You know, there's still a lot of people who believe that. There's also those who are too poor to care about these uh, 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 precautions and these COVID say, regulations. And um, COVID-19 vaccine is for the rich. Yeah. You know, well, you know, or, or COVID is, you know, rich man's disease. You know, there's also those who are too poor to care. And so the the peculiarities of Nigeria's problems are many, you know, and... Information, lack of information is one of them. Yes. In, in one year now, we've dealt with this for more than a year now, how much more work have you seen the National Orientation Agency do? On radio, on television, on social media, how much more work have you seen the National Orientation Agency, the Ministry of Information, you know, do with regards to informing Nigerians, you know, on what is important um, and what must be done with regards to COVID-19? There's not very, not, not very much work. And every single time on this platform, I always say that when people are given appointments, do they get to ask them, you know, what do you achieve, have you achieved in four years? What have you achieved in two years? In what way have you transformed this ministry that you've been in charge of in the last four years? So what will the Minister of Information say that he's done with the Minister of Information in the last four years? Debunk in, yeah, that's, that's basically what they've done. They've debunked, you know, um, stories from the media. But what would you say you've achieved with this ministry in the last four years? In what ways? Now that the world is dealing with a pandemic, now that Nigeria is dealing with a pandemic, in what ways has the Minister of Information and become more effective in what ways have they become more effective the with platform that you know, passing to have, out information? You know, the, the platform that seemed to be one that was widely used to spread information, you get retweets to, you know, push your ideals out there, was banned. The ban is still on, or the suspension was still on, yeah. even though the AGF went to the nights when um, NEBA took, took them to court some weeks ago. But yes, we... we we need access to more information. The media is doing their job. We have lots of information out there, um, some even done by yourself, um, sensitizing Nigerians on what the COVID-19 virus is and how important is it, it is for Nigerians to wash their hands, keep a safe distance and all of that. But really, that information gap, I feel that Nigerian, the Nigerian government should be able to tap into social media. I mean, that's where, that's where the majority of the youth are, should be able to well, tap into social media to communicate these things. How many times, okay, for example, when it's time for elections, you see lots of sponsored posts on Facebook telling you which party to vote for. But it's COVID-19 pandemic season. How many times do you go on social media and you see a pop-up, a sponsored post by the Nigerian government sensitizing you about COVID-19? It's the WHO who puts um, caveats there, giving you warnings that, oh, this post might be unverified. But it makes you want to ask questions, just how much has the government done to harness the power of social media to e educate Nigerians well, if you, on if you the COVID-19 pandemic? If you look at Nigeria's population and and compare that with you know how many Nigerians are, are actually active on social media. You know, social media may not be the most powerful tool. It currently is the you know tool that the world is using. But you know, but the one that's available for the people who are on social media. How much information agency, have they had through social media from the government? The National so Orientation Agency has access to every type of media. They have print media. They have billboards. They have social media. They have uh, TV. They have radio. They have everything. But they're still not doing what they should be doing. The Ministry of Information is still not doing what needs to be done. Um, are we going to have to get into another lockdown or not? These are very important conversations. Why do we always wait until it's too late? 
is there better preparation now for uh, for palliatives if we're going to go into another, another lockdown? We, we there's nothing, you know, of these conversations that seem to be going on. Are we trying to reach herd immunity? Do we know what herd immunity means for Nigerians? Well, hopefully we have a guest. Um, we will, not hopefully, we definitely will have a guest, uh, you know, on the program this week to speak about these things and what is important that um, needs to be done for here, us here in Lagos and, of course, the whole country with regards to COVID-19 and the latest surge um, and the Delta variant also. Stay with us. We're getting into, into a new conversation now. There is a plight of, uh, of displaced persons that needs to be spoken about. And we're going to be having someone joining us as a communications coordinator of the ICRC here in Nigeria. He joins us next to talk about this.